Hi, this is Evelyn Puerto, and I'm back with another weekly writing update. Well, last week I made a huge push and wrote almost 20,000 words and finished up the first draft of The Girl Who Walked on Water. Most of what I was working on last week was creating a, a third subplot to the book, and that one just took on a life of its own, and the characters just came to life. That's where the joy of the writing really, really came out. So I'm thrilled with that progress, but I'll tell you, it wore me out. So now I'm trying to catch my breath, and I thought I would try some marketing videos on Instagram, and let's just say that was an epic fail. We'll try again next week. But now I'm editing The Girl Who Broke the Dark, trying to get that ready to get to my editor next month so it can be published later this fall. And that's where we are this week. And we'll get back to reading two more pages of Flight of the Spark. Iskra, as you remember, had fled the bandits and had been taken to visit a Risker camp, something that is completely and utterly forbidden. You ran through some igla pines, didn't you? They don't call them needles just because that's what they look like. She dropped Iskra's arm and fetched a woven basket from a shelf over the bench. Where are you from, Iskra? Kishin. I was in Shinru and missed the caravan. She hunched her shoulders. We were attacked by bandits and I had to run. I don't have permission to be out all night. What am I going to do? She surprised herself, talking so openly with this Risker woman. Something about her kind and gentle manner made Iskra relax a little. Let's get you fixed up first, then we'll worry about that. If you please, you don't have to go to any trouble. The woman laughed. No, Walla, who uh, at all, dear. By that, Iskra guessed she meant helping her was no trouble at all. As she talked, the woman crushed dry, dried herbs between her fingers, then poured oil on them and mashed them with a mortar and pestle. She wiped the blood from Iskra's face and arms with a damp cloth and dabbled the oil mixture on the cuts. Then she removed a cord from around her neck and held up something shaped like a dragonfly that flashed green and lavender as it reflected the light. May the power of the sky god heal her. May the power of the sky god protect her. May the power of the sky god see her home, the woman chanted. As she sang, she passed the jeweled dragonfly over Iskra's wounds. In spite of her pain and fear, Iskra tried not to laugh. Silly superstitions these riskers have. They not, may not be savages, but they are ignorant. Do you want something to eat? The woman asked as she replaced the dragonfly around her neck. Yes, if you please. The woman turned back to the fire and Iskra took the opportunity to look around. The floor was pine, polished and shining, as were the tables and chairs. She ran her fingers over the smooth surface of the table, tracing the rounded edge. She noted how solid and sturdy the bench was, not making a, more, a move or creak as she shifted her weight. Braided rag rugs made bright splashes of color on the floor, the reds and yellows of autumn leaves mixed with green, brown, and white. A huge brick oven filled most of one side of the room. Rows of tiny plants and pots sat on the windowsills. A ladder rested against a wall leading up to a loft. Iskra felt the room embrace her in a warm and comforting hug. Maybe the riskers weren't so bad. Iskra bit her lip. No, they're barbarians. I can't let them fool me. Iskra watched the woman as she opened a small door on the side of the oven. Heat from a roaring fire wafted through the room. The woman tossed some wood in and shut the door. Tilting her head to the side, Iskra shook her head. These barbarians made cooking over a fire safer and closing the fire so no one would accidentally get burned. Why are none of our fires burnt like that? The floor of the door flew open and Iskra jumped. She jerked her head around to see a silver hair, thicker version of Hiko stride into the room. He was followed by three young women, Tarkio, and then Hiko himself. Cilia, said the man, I hear from our son we have company. You hear right. She smiled at him, then pointed at Iskra. This is Iskra. Iskra, this is my husband, Osip. Sit down, all of you. It's time to eat. Hiko, open the ikuna, please. What's ikuna? Iskra wondered. Maybe it's some horrible wine they'll force me to drink. She wasn't left to speculate long. Hiko reached up and opened a small pane set within the larger glass pane of the window. How clever, she thought. They can have fresh air without creating a draft. And they have glass windows. No one has glass in the village, except the E4. There you have it. Two more pages of Flight of the Spark. Come back next week and we'll keep reading and I'll give you another writing update. Thanks for stopping by.